If you've seen the film The King's Speech, maybe you know that uh, in that film, uh, the king who had a stutter was able to speak fluently when um, he's listening to music and he can't hear himself. Um, my name is Kate Watkins and I am a professor of cognitive neuroscience in the Department of Experimental Psychology at the University of Oxford. So this really means that I'm interested in the relationship between the brain and behaviour. And specifically, my interest is in um, how the brain achieves uh, communication through language. My research project at Imera will be focused on developmental stuttering. So this is a fairly common condition that affects 5% of children and many of those children will stop stuttering during um, childhood. They, so that leaves us with about 1% of people who stutter for their whole lives. So we call that persistent developmental stuttering. Um, and most people know what stuttering is, but it is a problem with initiating the speech sequence. So they have problems at the start of um, speech. So it's the start of words, the start of sentences, etc. And if you've seen the film The King's Speech, maybe you know that uh, in that film, uh, the king who had a stutter was able to speak fluently when um, he's listening to music and he can't hear himself speaking and um, there are lots of other um, sort of techniques that can induce fluency in someone who stutters but only temporarily but I'm interested in why these we call them fluency enhancers because they improve the fluency why these work so there are lots of different fluency enhancers it's like um, speaking in time with a metronome or a beat. Uh, it can just be sort of tapping, or it can be something you hear or something you see that has a regular rhythm that helps people to speak fluently. This um, observation that when someone who stutters speaks in time uh, with a metronome is really important. It suggests that they cannot generate for themselves this internal cue to initiate spe speech. So this idea of being able to produce speech in time is really critical to my project. Um, so yeah, so the, the project uh, that I want to do involves um, a different kind of brain imaging that's called magnetic encephalography. So this just uses um, magnets around the head to record the brain activity and it's really good at recording exactly when different brain areas are active. Um, so it's the perfect technique for studying timing in the brain. Here in uh, Marseille, at the Institute for Language, Communication and Brain, there are many researchers who are interested in timing and the brain and speaking. And so that's one of the reasons that um, I came here was to learn from them, learn about the techniques and um, ideas that they have about how to improve um, the way the brain can predict the time at which they want, it wants to speak. There are researchers uh, at um, the ILCB, like uh, Ben Murillon um, and uh, Jenny Koo, who are interested in this kind of research. And so, um, yeah, I'm sharing my ideas with them and hearing about the kinds of research that they're doing um, in their labs. And then hopefully this will lead to maybe some collaborations or we would build an experiment um, using their expertise to understand 
this effect in people who stutter, this, this timing effect. Really, I mean, I feel like it's a, a real kind of special time and a special place uh, to be um, for me in, in my research. It really gives me kind of that freedom to think about my research program and how it relates to people here, but just really that freedom, that kind of academic freedom to not be distracted by the usual day-to-day -day, uh, requests on time and teaching and all of those other things. I, I get that freedom here and um, it's really been helpful so far. I mean, I feel like, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of an escape, <laughs> really. Um, and just also to be challenged, I think, by um, other ways of thinking. I, I think I live a little bit in a bubble where I'm used to talking to people who think similarly to me and actually here it's been really useful to hear different perspectives.